Hi, this is a summary of uh, chapter number seven from your textbook. Uh, the main topic of the chapter is uh, about big data. And big data is a, an interesting terminology and it is easy uh, to, to understand uh, in a way, uh, but at the same time, uh, it is also confusing because many different people will refer big data as a different concept of things. Just like many uh, buzzword in the information system world, the term big data has been fading away a little bit in the last couple of years, uh, even though it was uh, very popular during the times of uh, 2015 to 2017 or so. After that, uh, the concept of big data has been give, giving away to uh, other more popular catch word such as artificial intelligence. And, and actually artificial intelligence is another resurrection of the old terminology that has been popular nowadays. Actually, it would be fair to say that uh, the resurgence of uh, artificial intelligence is uh, the beneficiary of big data. Without big data, artificial intelligence will not bloom like what we have today. Now, from the service of the, uh, the terminology, big data, of, of course, referring to the big volume of the data that we are encountering today. But there, of course, uh, has additional meaning. This additional meaning is actually coming out of uh, how people use the internet. And uh, more and more multimedia and uh, non-texture information has been, been pumped into the social network of our ev everyday life. And these big volume of data create a, a technology and environment uh, we call big data today. To understand better um, of big data, of course, the first thing you need to know is um, how big the data is. And uh, it, it, you need a point of reference to compare the size of data. Let's say uh, most of the computer you're buying today, uh, that you are buying either 500 gigabytes of uh, a hard drive or you're buying one terabyte or two terabyte of hard drive. Now this uh, terabyte um, example is actually a good reference. How big is a terabyte? If we uh, convert the entire um, the uh, library of uh, uh, London in terms of uh, its text, uh, it's probably converting to uh, less than 10 terabytes. Not, not including the picture, of course, just the texture information. So uh, regular people's computer today can actually house a, uh, a library in, in, the, in the era of 1980s and 1990s. And um, another point of reference is how fast the data set can generate. The uh, average video recording for one hour is about um, uh, one gigabyte or so. So that uh, if you have, uh, say, about 1,000 professors doing the lecture recording that we're, what we are doing now, and uh, you quickly have about uh, uh, one uh, terabyte every, um, every hour. And of course, we have more professors than that, and more people are doing content, YouTubers and uh, uh, people doing the short uh, video, uh, entertainment video, Snapchat, Facebook, so this will add up very quickly. So we are looking at uh, the size of the data in a typical uh, large cross international internet company will be at the uh, zigabyte or zettabyte uh, area, uh, as you can see on this particular table. So the basic concept of big data, of course, is big. And um, furthermore, you need to know some terminology we use to describe uh, the big data. And uh, originally we would call them three V, volume, variety, and the velocity. And, uh, uh, and more people find this is a very nice concept to, to explain big data. And people uh, very quickly discover other V words that to describe uh, big data. So uh, we uh, quickly have four V that including a word called veracity. And uh, people also add other terminology like variability and value into big data technology and analysis. Even so, most of the big data um, practitioner, they're still treating the, the concept of big data 
very vaguely. And usually when you refer to big data, uh, you are referring to a person who knows the technology that used to handle big data. The picture on this particular slide shows the uh, one of the big data vendor called Teradata, and this is called the Aster Data. Uh, Aster Data is actually a company acquired by, by Teradata, and uh, showing you how they perceive uh, as an organizational company, if you're, you're facing big data problem, uh, what is this uh, overall uh, scenario and uh, a problem you try to solve in terms of big data. And um, to explain this uh, particular picture better, you can see that on the left-hand side of the slide, it shows the input of the data. And the right-hand side of the, uh, the picture shows the output or the consumer of the data. So in between, there are certain technology and, and management mechanism that go in, go in between. Try to integrate the new data set and traditional data set. And uh, the main problem inside of this uh, box or the methodology is the, the, the difference between something what we call traditional data set and the new data set. And uh, the orange box there uh, represent uh, the term called uh, data warehouse. It actually represents the concept of traditional data set. Uh, in my concept, the traditional data or database or traditional big data is referring to the data that has already structured. So all the database, for those of you who are MIS student, learn database, those are the structured data and how we arrange uh, data uh, in the old way. The new data are represented by the, uh, the blue uh, box and uh, uh, the red uh, look like a, um, a light bulb there, a type of uh, shape in, in the picture, represent the new data that has no structure, textual information, video, multimedia, and those are the new data set. And uh, the, one of the biggest problems of uh, big data is that traditional structured data are easier to understand and, and analyze if you know uh, some of the language in a structured database, such as uh, SQL language or uh, SQL. And, but in the new big data era, uh, there are a lot of data you cannot uh, use the SQL language to, to analyze. That is the problem we try to solve or the technology try to solve for you in the big data uh, era or environment. And one little uh, caveat here is that in the blue box, you see that data platform, it shows an elephant. And nowadays, um, almost by default, that people will think of uh, any, any platform. And in, in this case, platform usually are referring to the operation system or database platform. Uh, used to, it, it's actually a file system. We will see that in the later slide in, in terms of a, the definition. It's a, um, a technology we call the Hardoop technology. It's an open source uh, together with the, uh, the Apache platform and uh, generate this, uh, this uh, ecosystem in information system. So that is why that when people talk about big data, they always refer to this elephant called uh, Hardoop. Uh, so if you want to put yourself in the, uh, the in the job market of big data, you got to know Hardoop. Knowing big data itself is actually not the, the purpose of uh, understanding the big data technology. The um, true application of big data is still on uh, this keywords we have on this particular slide. It's called the value. So if you have a, a technology or the platform for handling large amount of data but you still cannot perform good uh, analytics, those big data are still hidden or uh, become meaningless in, uh, for your organization. So the, the, the sake of uh, handling big data is not for the good management of data. Instead, the, uh, to study and, and extract value is still the ultimate uh, purpose of big data. Uh, if you uh, go all the way back to the beginning of our uh, chapter one and two, you know that the most important value for any data analytic project or technology is to support decision making. So if your big data project cannot support decision making, they will be useless or a waste of money in, in that regard. Your textbook has documented the uh, very uh, many, what do you call this um, uh, factor, su success factor 
or consideration that uh, you you in the organization need to know uh, when you are facing a big data problem. Uh, say, for example, if you go to Walmart, Walmart has traditionally facing a, a big data problem and uh, they had uh, in the past handled it very well using a technology called Data Warehouse and uh, they were uh, successful beating other competitors such as Sears or Kmart uh, in, in our retail market or traditional retail market was because uh, they have been successfully handled the large amount of data they collect from their uh, logistic system, their trucking fleet, their warehouse and their customer buying behavior. And, and nowadays, of course, they are facing even more competition. So they are now facing another big data problem. Say, for example, now th their competitor is Amazon. So you got to know how people behave in this online world uh, by uh, analyzing their behavior data uh, online, which web page they have uh, visited and what social network vineyard they have used and what is their preference. How do you extract people's preference without uh, invading their uh, privacy. So those are the issues that uh, uh, everybody, uh, especially large company, are facing uh, because they are facing big data and they need to respond to the change of big data so they can compete better with their competitors. And using a simple diagram that you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven different category of uh, consideration that uh, you need to worry about it because it's sort of like a framework for you to handle a project. So this is a, a almost true for any information system project. You need to have a, a, a business objective. You need to have a strong leadership and uh, sponsorship. You need to have uh, uh, alignment between business goal and your strategy and so on and so forth. Uh, the, uh, the category related to technology are the two category Actually, I'm, I'm trying to circle using the, the cursor. Uh, these two on the left lower corner says the, the right analytic tools and the strong data infrastructure are actually the focus of discussion in uh, this particular chapter. So uh, we will discuss in particularly the infrastructure uh, area of big data uh, to show you what are the popular vendors and technology and concept using big data analysis. First of all, the fundamental infrastructure of the technology that require or your textbook calls this enablers of big data analytics. And these including some of the kind of the buzzword or uh, hardware and software technology that uh, people talk about in the, uh, in the computer engineering world. Um, and those are good um, uh, starting points when you are looking at the technology you're going to be uh, buy or rent from uh, for your future uh, environment, uh, a company or uh, organization that uh, require computing power. This including in-memory in technology, in-database technology, grid compu uh, computing and uh, uh, appliance, Internet of Things appliance. I would like to try using the simplest way to explain these four buzzwords and uh, so you can understand that better. In-memory uh, analytics or in-memory in everything, there are a lot of technology labeled themselves as in-memory. The best way to understand in-memory is that um, uh, they are running everything in the uh, technology or the memory that we call RAM. And, uh, and I believe after you have taken the fundamental of uh, information system class, you understand what is a, a RAM. And um, uh, to explain better, RAM is probably the second fattest memory uh, device that you can find in your computer system. The fast, the, the most, the fattest uh, memory in your computer system is something what we call the CPU cache. It is the uh, memory integrated with your uh, computer CPU. The secondary, the, the second most powerful memory is the RAM. The third is the hard drive. And hard drive usually has a different uh, type of uh, hard drive or so-called permanent uh, memory device, including something what uh, people have heard about called the solid state hard drive and something more traditional hard drive. And uh, if you have a, a geeky friends that um, uh, give you advice of what computer uh, you need to buy, 
And uh, if you ask me, I mean, I was a Kiki, a Kiki student before. Uh, if I'm as uh, recommend you to buy a computer with the uh, the minimum budget, and what I recommend you to buy is that uh, you want to invest in a solid state drive hard drive, and uh, invest more on the RAM instead of uh, uh, instead invest more on the CPU. And people usually are are fooled by the speed or calculating power of CPU. But as a matter of fact, most of the uh, the 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 performance bottleneck that we encountered today is coming out of the memory, and so if you can put in a uh, a, a solid state drive, you can actually speed up your computer much faster than anything else. And of course, uh, the the other alternative is if you can put everything into your RAM, uh, like your cell phone, uh, that would be uh, the example of uh, a, um, a a computing device uh, do not use hard drive. Your, your system will be even faster. So uh, this, the concept of in-memory is that we try to uh, squeeze as much uh, data or processing or program as possible into this uh, uh, area, memory area that can perform the fast, fattest, and that would be called in-memory. The second is called in-database uh, analytic. The other uh, factor slow down the performance of today's computing environment is moving data from one place to another over network. So uh, the uh, basic concept of uh, improving the performance is try to do the calculation right where the data is. So you do not want to move the data across the network. And that is called the in-database concept, right? So keep the data where they are and do the calculation analysis and report right there. And you finish the report first before you send the report. You do not move the data. You leave the data and uh, uh, computing the, the report right there. That's called in database. Grid computing traditional is something what we call the parallel computing technology. The basic idea is um, uh, we cannot always improve uh, the CPU speed and uh, with the limited resources. And uh, there's still a bottleneck uh, to squeeze the transistor into a, a one single CPU. So uh, can we use multiple CPU or even multiple computer and put them together? Uh, sometimes we call this a process uh, to create a cluster or to, to create a, a forest of computer. And this is what uh, has been uh, done. Actually, you are using uh, the uh, the cluster of a computer when, whenever you go to the uh, Google to do search. And uh, the cluster concept nowadays has been uh, replaced by another terminology called cloud computing. So uh, the grid computing is actually the concept of uh, uh, if you want to build this cloud internally, you got to consider how to create this grid so that you can you can uh, uh, increase the speed of your processing power. And uh, that actually uh, leads to a side thinking of uh, uh, what to be uh, known as uh, the infrastructure decision in the organization. And one of the decisions that uh, in a working environment, especially for a large organization, when you are determining uh, the traditional decision of uh, so-called uh, uh, buy or rent, or uh, in-house or outsource, that's those kind of decision. Uh, the more and more uh, tendency today is that you gotta go uh, outsourcing and so a lot of computing power a lot of these uh, big data platform you want to use uh, the outsource uh, environment such as a cloud vendor instead of uh, building this uh, in-house um, uh, for those company uh, treat their data very preciously and you want to build a in-house uh, infrastructure then uh, this the grid computing and the uh, infrastructure we're going to be talking about uh, like Hardoop are the consideration you need to know. Otherwise, the debate is pretty much settled already for the majority of the user, even as big as the large university we see today, like U of I system, we are slowly um, outsource our, our big data or even traditional uh, data management to the, crowd, uh, to the cloud for uh, cloud vendors such as Google, uh, Amazon, or, or Microsoft to handle the data. Uh, we are not going to be handling the data ourselves. So that, that is the trend. And the last one is called the appliance. And the um, internet appliance or, or data appliance has been 
discussed the terminology has been used for many years. The, uh, the best way to understand the, uh, uh, the, uh, the appliance is that uh, it's something autonomous and you can accumulate and uh, uh, put them uh, one uh, to the other, kind of like a, a Lego box of, uh, of resource that you can put them together. And uh, one of the uh, advancement and some of the some of you probably have encountered a company called SAP uh, in the study of uh, information system. SAP is a company that actually moving a lot of their computing power software into something what we call appliance. Uh, they have a system called uh, SAP HANA. And HANA system, H-A-N-A, -A, HANA system, is actually uh, something what, they, what uh, SAP call the blade computing. Uh, the concept here is that in the, in the past, SAP sell enterprise uh, resource software to company and company need to build by computer and install SAP and hire consultant to manage or Im implement SP SAP for a particular company. But now they, uh, what they are trying to promote is that uh, forget about all these installation um, uh, headache. Uh, what we will do is we'll sell you this HANA system. The HANA is a uh, hardware, it's, it's, a, it's a box. So your, your company depends on how big you are. You just buy this HANA blade and put, plug into your organization. And this HANA blade has memory, has in-memory, has uh, in-database, has software, has all the tools you, you need. Yeah, and uh, the more uh, capacity, if you say your, your company grow, you need more capacity. You just buy another blade kind of like a Lego uh, box, you stack them together. So uh, very quickly, a, a lot of traditional system problem has been replaced by simple uh, hardware decision. That's a concept called appliance. And uh, in a, a more extreme way that uh, even the auto autonomous driving or aut automatic driving car is an appliance as well. Because the, uh, the car, the smart car itself, has a computer, has a memory, has a communication capability. And in the uh, very near future, we will see that uh, these car will coordinate uh, on the highway so that when, when each car can uh, talk to each other, they are like the Lego uh, box that uh, uh, we are talking about in the uh, SAP HANA system. It's actually uh, reduced the potential of uh, uh, accident much more because uh, now the uh, car can talk, a uh, robot can, uh, or automatic car can talk to each other. They are more like an uh, uh, integrated uh, thinking machine already. So they can avoid the conflict internally uh, when, without uh, being interfered by human decision. So that is uh, the, the basic infrastructure concept we have when we are handling big data analysis. Let's move very quickly to the technology buzzword that you will encounter in the big data era. Uh, MapReducer reduce, map or MapReduce, uh, this is actually an algorithm or programming uh, procedure. Hot, Hadoop and Hive, Pig, HBase, Flume, Uzi, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, next slide, you will see another uh, a few terminology. And all these technology, if you look at the picture, that uh, you can see on this particular slide, uh, all related to this uh, elephant head there. So even the hive, hive is a elephant head with the, uh, the bee. So you know that, that they're uh, more or less related to Hadoop. And this is actually, actually, again, become an ecosystem already. So whenever we talk about that, a company want to build big data capability, if this is the in-house project, then it will be a Hadoop, uh, most likely. If this is out, uh, outsourcing, most likely will be uh, in the cloud. And to be honest, uh, honest with you, and some of the terminology you see on these two slides, uh, your professor don't even know about it. And I have to kind of go through the textbook. And every time I go to them, I kind of forget uh, some of them afterward. Uh, so don't worry about, uh, you cannot remember uh, too much. And But I will still recommend go back to the uh, page uh, that I have in previous slide uh, to look at the definition or where they're coming from. And uh, if you do not have uh, a textbook right next to you, you can always uh, Google and search in Wikipedia to find out their a brief description of those technology. Knowing those technology will be good enough.
So next, let me uh, look at a few of these terminology and go a little bit deeper uh, to explain and so that you can talk to people more intelligently about this uh, terminology. So this um, a technology called MapReduce, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is a, an algorithm. And of course, there are explanations about what this uh, algorithm is. And your textbook even provides a picture of this uh, algorithm, what it does, and why it become a uh, technology of handling uh, big data. And uh, the best way that I can um, uh, explain to you is uh, uh, in two ways. One is called the summary report, right? Let me give you one uh, simple example. Say, for example, if you want to uh, generate a report for uh, Walmart, says uh, how many, uh, what is the average sales for a banana uh, last year? So how many uh, per month? So every month, how many banana you sell in, in Walmart la last um, year? That particular question you can, if you have a basic training or if you assuming you have a very large um, uh, Excel uh, spreadsheet in front of you, you can, uh, very, of course, very quickly uh, pull down the, the summary function or the grouping function that uh, generate the, uh, or even create a pivot table to generate that, um, that uh, monthly summary of your sales report. But when the, uh, the spreadsheet, uh, spreadsheet sites become so big like what Walmart has, and uh, these, uh, simply doing that calculation would take forever. So what are the alternative way of uh, uh, making this calculation faster when you need it? Uh, the answer is that we can do a sub uh, summary first, report first. Say for example, instead of calculating the whole year data, you can create the weekly data first. So later when you eat, uh, um, need um, uh, annual data, what you need to do is to add up 52 weeks together and get the result. And that uh, stepwise or uh, layered calculation is one of the basic concept in MapReduce algorithm. The other uh, analogy that we can learn from this is uh, the concept called zip file. Yeah, I, I know you don't understand the algorithm uh, of uh, zip zipping file, reduce the size of the, the file when you put them into a zip folder or the, uh, the terminology you probably heard about a lot called MP3 or MP4 compression, video compression encoding. Those are actually uh, algorithms very similar to the concept of uh, MapReduce. And essentially they are using some sort of a mathematic uh, algorithm to group similar data together so that uh, when similar data are recorded in, the, in your data file, uh, they will only be remembered as how many times they occurred and when those uh, uh, repeating data being occurred. So you don't need, need to uh, repeat the data you re report or record it in your database that much. And uh, in that way, you can reduce the size of your your picture, audio, video, or files in or any anything, including structured data. So that's concept called map reduce. And um, in the traditional uh, big data environment, and we have a lot of these um, programming language, including Python or uh, C, they have already provided uh, the library for, for the programmer to use to uh, reduce the size of the data. So that is uh, the te te uh, technology-wide, uh, the way we try to understand. For business student, you just need to know that this is a, an algorithm, is a, a popularly available in uh, many uh, big data or data scientist environment already. The next thing is uh, Hadoop. Hadoop, uh, the most important thing to remember here is uh, this terminology called the HDFS. It's uh, the this, uh, highly distributed f file system that we are looking at. Essentially, this is a, a way of uh, allocating data into different uh, parts and different uh, into a cluster of uh, the uh, big data environment. It has a lot of uh, great algorithms sitting behind so that it can process a large amount of data faster than traditional operation system or a traditional database. So that, that file management system is actually the, uh, the, the essence of Hadoop. And Hadoop was developed again together with uh, uh, the Apache project. And Apache, for those of you who probably know that, is a, um, 
uh, an internet uh, uh, hosting uh, system that uh, uh, sitting on on Unix or Linux uh, computing environment, and uh, and because Unix and Li Linux uh, ecosystem is good at uh, developing technology, handling network traffic and file management system, and, uh, and no doubt that Hadoop is coming out of that uh, ecosystem. So this this is actually a good, very efficient, uh, big file big uh, uh, file management system uh, on computer. So that is the best way to understand it. And that is the way I understand it as a professor. So some, some of the important concepts people may, may uh, try to trick you, especially uh, during the interview or uh, you know, just conversation uh, that uh, in a uh, technology or uh, purchasing environment, uh, when you try to buy some technology, you know, people will probably throw at you all these terminology to fool you. So these are some of the things that you can uh, try to uh, get a sense of uh, what Hadoop is and is not. It's not a uh, uh, one single product, it's multiple product. It's an ecosystem and uh, it's a file system. It's not a database. Uh, it is uh, look like a SQL, but it's actually not SQL. It's actually related to another terminology we're going to be introducing. It's called uh, NoSQL later in the next few slides. The other discussion point is uh, important as well because uh, we are in a tr transition and the transition is probably coming out of uh, uh, starting somewhere around 2010 to, to today, the last 10 years of time. We're moving from a traditional uh, so-called data warehouse type of environment to this uh, big data uh, and cloud environment. So big data cloud, kind of use them, uh, you know, uh, not interchangeably, but uh, uh, classify them into the same category. So the main main idea is that traditionally we are all dealing with this uh, big database that the company built internally. So when you are trying to do analytics, uh, the whole classes about analytics, you use the traditional resources that we collect called the structured data. And structured data, when they uh, are used for analytics, we build data warehouse. We organize the data in a way that it's easier for us to do analytics that's called data warehouse. But uh, big data moving away from that to handle more data, uh, we talked about uh, today in our recording today. So uh, it, it's kind of important to know the benefit and uh, or how the company should uh, adapt or change their mindset from the data warehouse era to the uh, big data era. And your textbook create a very nice comparison um, table even though I, I do not 100% agree with table, but it will be a good way to, to look at these two parad paradigm. Yeah, I'll say I'll call this paradigm, not two different uh, technology or two ecosystem uh, as the, uh, uh, the the platform for business analytics. And uh, it's uh, easier for us to understand how to compare them. So the table has been broken down into two slides. The first one that as you can probably see that there are a couple of empty cell. Uh, one of the empty cell on the data warehouse part is that you can see that uh, the unstructured data is the focus of hard to uh, data warehouse is handling more structure. Uh, on the first part, it's something about the, the OLAP uh, report and latency. Those are belonging to data warehouse because by definition, or OLAP. Uh, and, and if you recall uh, our recording earlier uh, in, in some of our assignment, OLAP is actually the, uh, the the pivot table in the data warehouse environment. So if you use pivot table uh, to understand OLAP, it will be good. So pivot table is handling is actually a tool used for structured data. So how to, of course, uh, does not do that kind of uh, analysis. And the last uh, category says a uh, discovery unknown relationship in the data advantage to Hadoop. I, I kind of disagree on that part because uh, uh, traditionally uh, data warehouse can be uh, can still be used to build the uh, predictive model as we discussed in chapter uh, five and six. But still that uh, uh, you know Hadoop because they have include a, a lot more unstructured and uh, uh, texture information can build a better uh, predictive uh, model so that that's probably they put the check mark in the hard room instead of uh, well, there we are. But you know, just to clarify, 
data warehouse can can be, uh, be used as a tool to uh, detect or discover unknown relationship as well that is why we have this terminology called data mining 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 you are try to discover something unknown or um, uh, ignored in the past and uh, that, that is why we have to do the mining data mining uh, traditionally is done in the data warehouse environment and the next comparison uh, group that you can see that um, the data warehouse is belonged into the traditional uh, uh, era usually uh, in data warehouse we use only one language it's called the SQL language but in Hadoop that uh, because it's an ecosystem there are so many different interfaces you can use traditional programming language a lot of these appliances and some of the the hardware robot artificial intelligence standard and or language uh, popular data language like uh, Python or R uh, language can interact with uh, Hadoop uh, much better. So typically, uh, most of the large organization in their uh, computing ecosystem or analytics ecosystem, uh, they uh, most likely already have something what they call the business intelligence or data warehouse tool on the right hand side. And when they are uh, trying to explore their opportunity more from this unstructured data, internet, social media, or even their existing chat room of their customer, they will build a parallel Hadoop uh, infrastructure and uh, try to handle these data. And somehow there uh, need to be a connection between these two in environment. And this is actually a big challenge. Uh, on the picture, it shows very simply uh, one blue and orange uh, arrowhead going back and forth. But that is where the, the money is that somebody have to somehow uh, link the discovery they have between their traditional data warehouse environment and their new social media uh, noise or the signal that you find. Uh, so this has become uh, where uh, a lot of imagination, imagination and uh, a lot of theory and story can be told in between. Uh, say for example, traditionally we study the, uh, the data warehouse to find uh, the pattern of the consumer buying behavior uh, by season, by month, by week. So every week we analyze our uh, previous data that we understand that there is something, uh, some kind of a weekly pattern, monthly pattern, season pattern, or annual pattern for, for buying a particular product. But when we get into a new uh, environment, we know that uh, other than those uh, uh, regular, regular patterns, uh, we also can find some uh, uh, extreme events that happen say for example the pand pandemic is happening in 2020 that uh, uh, suddenly disrupt all these patterns for us so that uh, uh, how can we handle those disruption uh, a big data environment a uh, sort of like an intelligent um, collection environment uh, in, in this case will be the big data tool that we need to collect data, store data, analyze data, to put those uh, special uh, conditions together. So combine your traditional uh, pattern analysis type of uh, structured uh, environment to this uh, more like a detection detective uh, uh, environment, we have a better decision support system. So that is the main concept. So it looked like a, a very simple uh, picture, but it's actually talking about, and you can imagine actually how difficult it is to uh, to combine your finding from traditional database and the new uh, discovery, even rumors, uh, misinformation you discover on the internet. So how do you make the judgment? Uh, that is where that uh, the problem we need to solve as a decision maker, as a uh, uh, supporting person uh, in an organization. So next time uh, you encounter big data or people talk to you about big data, you tell them uh, how to uh, that create the infrastructure and uh, ecosystem. And uh, anybody now they want to handle big data problem, the best recommendation, go to the cloud. So uh, on the uh, vendor recommendation, you have some of the uh, traditional vendor, uh, such as if you heard about Ter Teradata uh, company and IBM, of course, and you also have some of the new one, uh, Cloudera. Uh, why they call it Cloudera? Because now, now they handle this uh, environment on the cloud. Uh, hot, hot work. 
I don't know what company is that, but you know, it must be some company uh, implementing similar technology uh, using Hadoop. And so you have uh, all the cloud provider, IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google. So those are the, the vendor that we are looking at. Uh, even SAP, they have their big data solution as well. And I'd like to show you this uh, nice picture your textbook has generated or kind of put in there. This is a very typical um, big data uh, network analysis that uh, a diagram generate. And this is, a, this is kind of a similar technology I use uh, very often in analyzing uh, social network communications and to analyzing uh, political movement. And uh, uh, the beginning of this type of analysis uh, trace all the way back to 2001 when 9-11 um, happened that uh, the United States uh, Department of Homeland Security of course afterward uh, was created and the, the Homeland Security Department uh, was trying to use uh, some of this network analysis to identify the, uh, the terrorist uh, cells and how they communicate on the internet using this type of uh, technology. And uh, for a marketer's uh, perspective, and you can see there are a lot of this uh, uh, big nose, blue nose. Those are the important people you need to kind of uh, pinpoint because they represent a uh, important person. When your information delivered to those nodes, uh, they will um, sort of like uh, uh, transfer your, your information to other people and, and become a very powerful marketing tool. And here I have a uh, kind of important terminology to introduce to you. No SQL, the last line on the slide says not only SQL. This was a, um, a terminology coined in 2012 uh, by a uh, conference in, in Seattle, uh, the SQL conference in Seattle. When we moved from the traditional structured database to a new database era. So a lot of vendors, including the Hadoop ecosystem, and uh, moving to the not, not only SQL uh, environment. Uh, I can immediately think of a name called the Mango or Mongo DB database that, that is actually in the NoSQL era. And these are the technology that uh, try to handle unstructured uh, database, uh, meaning that uh, typically uh, examples such as uh, Twitter feed, uh, those are pure texture information without uh, a good structure and somehow we have to identify and study doing text analysis to uh, understand the meaning of those uh, big amount of data. Finally, uh, I want to introduce um, the term called a stream analytics as the, the conclusion point for chapter number seven. Uh, the stream anal analytic is actually the concept of when we are dealing with big data. Instead of dealing with um, the uh, big reservoir or big repository of data, we are only, only uh, going to be assemble the data when the time goes by, right? So the concept is that it's kind of like uh, if you want to study the, the water quality of a, uh, a river, you do not go, uh, you know, try to put water into a reservoir and study the, uh, the, the water. Instead, uh, you just uh, go to a, a particular segment of the river and just uh, uh, study the, uh, the water at that particular time. And somehow that over a certain period of time, you have to go back again and again. And every time you study the water quality, it may change because the, the water is a flowing concept, just like our data. Our sales data or uh, every day's data uh, will go uh, differently from one day to the other. Uh, a lot of time is meaningless to study the uh, big historical data. And uh, it will be a good idea just to identify a particular uh, time period and uh, study that particular time period uh, uh, periodically. And that creates a concept called the stream analytic. Reduce the amount of computing power required. Uh, also are more related to the uh, the reality. And um, another important uh, concept about the, the stream analysis is that a lot of our data today is our vanishing data. So uh, say for example, you're, if you're using Snapchat, uh, what is the biggest feature of Snapchat compared to other social media? Well, uh, you know, of course, other social media are, are learning and, and try to copy that concept as well. The Snapchat uh, uh, message 
will disappear at, after a certain, uh, certain amount of time. And that vanish data is actually uh, something. So uh, to do stream analytic, somehow you have to sort of like uh, doing the snapshot or just like Snapchat, <laughs> snapshot of a, uh, a particular point in time for, for that uh, big amount of data. And that is a concept of uh, stream analytic. It's very important and it's uh, uh, using another way is that it, it is the uh, uh, data monitoring in uh, uh, today's fast moving data environment. So uh, that is uh, the conclusion I want to have and for big data analysis and uh, similar to many other uh, chapter, we will not have a, a hands-on exercise in big data and we could not have especially in a introduction to analytic class. But uh, what you need to know are the uh, terminology that uh, related to this particular ca uh, category. Final words, uh, even though your textbook classify big data as a prescriptive analytic, it actually cover everything from uh, the, the descriptive, uh, predictive, and prescriptive, all three area as well. So it's a, actually a, dis a technology terminology discussion chapter for you. Until next time, bye.